Hello, my name is Mark Scholz, and I'm here to talk to you about the ITIL framework and best practices as it relates to IT service management. The ITIL framework was developed by the UK government back in 1989, and since that time it has been employed by many organizations across the globe. The ITIL framework is broken down into two main groups, that being service support and service delivery. From the service support perspective, this is all about capturing change uh, capturing incidents and releasing change inside of the organization. Everything starts at the service desk. This is where the end user community uh, calls into the service desk and logs either an incident or a request for change. It then moves to incident management. It's, this means we log this as an incident regardless of whether or not it's classified as a known problem or known error or it is simply a request for change. If it is a problem or a known error, it then moves to problem management. This is where problem management now starts to look into the root cause of the problem and come up with a resolution. It then moves to change management. Change management is also classified as the change advisory board. This is where we assess the change or the request for change and put, assign risk to it, priority, and then move it along the, in the system so that it can be turned into a release and provisioned out to the end user community by release management. So release management is, is responsible for packaging releases, testing them, and then releasing them to the end user community. All of this information and every step of what we're logging and reporting is recorded in the configuration management database. The configuration management database, also known as the CMDB, is the central repository for all of our configuration items, also known as our corporate assets. On the service delivery side, we also have other disciplines as well. And this is really around the delivery of IT services to the overall business organization and business units. It all really starts with service level management, also known uh, in the industry as service level agreements. This is where we build the agreements between the, the IT organization and the individual business units, including external vendors. This is where we set our goals and our targets in terms of service level in the uh, event that something should go wrong. Availability management is, all, is talking really around the availability of IT services. What if we have a problem in terms of uh, a disaster recovery? How quickly are we going to be able to provision new uh, individual assets out into the organization to ensure that the business can continue to, to operate? Business continuity management is really all around building the disaster recovery plan and the business continuity plan. This is the plan that we well document and repose inside of our organization, make available to all the individuals that need access to it to ensure that in the event of a disaster, these are the steps that we must take down at a very granular level to ensure that business can continue. Financial management is really around financial management of our IT services organization. Everything from budgeting to provisioning, the requisitioning of new hardware, capacity, etc. Anything that involves a dollar sign is being managed by the, uh, the financial services people inside the IT organization. And capacity management is really about the ability to um, provision capacity, and this could be hard disk capacity, etc., out to my IT organization to ensure that we can continue to provide a high level of services to our business. And this is also involving a lot of forward looking and thinking as well in terms of future capacity requirements, et cetera. It is important to note that the ITIL framework uh, is something that has been developed, as I said before, since 1989 and has gone through two major revisions since that time. Currently, this framework is at version three, and uh, there are obviously plans to continue to, uh, to grow upon it as well. IT organizations or customers or, or vendors or what have you do not become ITIL certified. Products do not become ITIL certified. It is only individuals that work for an organization such as a maybe an ITIL uh, consulting services organization or a customer or a partner or whatever they may be, those individuals become ITIL certified and there are three levels of ITIL certification as well. The first level of ITIL certification is the foundations level. And this is simply one exam that the individual will take that gives them the foundational requirements and knowledge so that they can start to better understand how ITIL is going to impact uh, their organization and what role they will play inside of that organization as well. We then go on to more of a practitioner level as well. So these individuals now become practitioners in the ITIL uh, space, so they are able to implement specific disciplines inside of the organization. And the final level of certification is the IT service manager certification. 
And this is essentially in the ITIL world is looked at as the expert in terms of ITIL. And this requires uh, the individual to take two major exams, uh, both on the service support side as well as the service delivery side. And once the individual is certified, they can not only help design these, uh, these disciplines for organizations, but they can also work with organizations to take them through this assessment as well as implementation phase. In summary, ITIL is a set of best practices created by the UK government back in 1989, and since then thousands of organizations around the world have been reaping the benefits of them. ITIL continues to adapt and mature as time goes by. By implementing ITIL best practices, organizations increase the efficiency of their IT services organization. This is done by better aligning their IT services to each of the individual processes already in place. The end result is an IT services organization that is more supportive of the overall business with mature, repeatable processes in place, reducing the chance for error, downtime, and of course, dissatisfied customers. At the end of the day, almost every organization around the world is in the business of making either the cash register ring or doing business as efficiently as possible. ITIL supports these efforts in every aspect. I hope you've enjoyed my brief introduction to the ITIL framework. I hope this will also make you go out there and want to learn more about ITIL. Until then, I'm Mark Schulz. Take care. <laughs>